Welcome back to Vote Why the Reviews. And today we are talking about ne the Netflix original animated series, Blood of Zeus, uh, from the incredible folks over at Powerhouse Animation. I am Kate and I'm here with Raphael. Hello. And I mean, it, it is it is the summer of hot gods, really, right? Like we have Hades 2, Blood of Zeus, Lore Olympus is coming to its finale. Like it is it is time to thirst after gods and get some good stories with it, too um just to kick things off we'll just jump into the synopsis following zeus's demise a power vacuum emerges amongst the gods leaving heron zeus's demigod son struggling to find his place he's racked with loss and hears a mysterious refrain in his dreams prodding him to save his brother seraphim who is suffering the terrors of the underworld unbeknownst to heron hades is trying to enlist seraphim to help him secure zeus's vacant throne and save his family from their long-standing suffering um yeah i think it may be a little bit hard to talk without spoilers but let's oh, no. start at the very beginning it's been years it's been years since season one Raphael, what were your expectations so I've been uh, dreaming and dreading this season uh, <laughs> because I love season one, but I was worried the moment they made that big reveal of Hades being involved in this. And I was like, oh, no, not again. Hades is the bad guy. Hades is the, the Satan analogy. He just lives in hell, so of course he's the bad guy. <laughs> uh, so I was very, like, unsure, even yeah. if I love everything else that they did in season one, and I love the... The, the, their take on everything um so i was a bit worried but also you like i, I just want more you said uh sexy god time yes uh, i just wanted the more uh, hot greek bots uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a, that's a good way to just throw all caution to the wind yeah <laughs> um so hades is actually one of my favorite characters in recent takes on greek mythology because he's not just he's not a satan analogy when he's done well so that's what i was excited for but i have also read every chapter of lore olympus which is used band-aids web comic on webtoon that is just like a reimagining of persephone and hades so when i saw hades and then i saw the first trailer i was like oh my girl persephone oh my man hades let's go um so that's what i was actually really excited for open a tab with that so i can read it later yes it's and it has a paperback or a, a hardcover book now too so okay it's on virtual. okay um but i was actually really excited when he when we got the reveal at the end of season one for hades but i think more of my expectation was less about the show and more about hoping that it was going to have attention because it's been so long since season one. And I know that the delay was because of COVID issues and stuff like that, which makes sense. But uh, yeah, my expectations, which I will say, my expectations were incredibly high because I love what Powerhouse does as an animation studio. So it was one of those coming in, like I, I sadly think at this point, powerhouse animation shows are kind of starting like three rungs above other ones in my expectation like i don't go in with no expectations i go with high ones um but thankfully we could it reason. pays off <laughs> yeah it they has deliver. a reason yeah. they deliver every time uh and let's get into talking about this one uh rafael what were some of your favorite parts of blood of zeus season two i mean we already went there hey it is, hey, it is rules <laughs> hey, it is the best Fuck the rest of the gods. Hades is my guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, all, all of my concerns were uh, destroyed the second he showed up on screen. I'm like, oh, they know what they're doing. Uh, and I already, I, 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 I talked to the, 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 the showrunners earlier today. And like, yeah, that, that was the, one of the biggest concerns that they didn't want to just do Hades as a villain for the sake of being a, a, a Satan analogy. Uh, he is the best, at least for me, the best character of the season. Um they do some very interesting things. And like most of the show, if you see in season one, you know their deal. Like they they change enough to make it feel fresh while still being like, oh, I see how we will get the yeah. version that we know. There are reasons why we know the version that we know and why the show is taking a different route while still sort of getting to the same place. And the same thing with Hades, like they do enough new things while still being like, I get it. Um so he's great, Persephone, him and Persephone are great. 
Yeah. Uh, I've been I'm trying really hard not to say anything like very specific. I don't like this. Um, but I feel like there's no surprises that, that that are worth going into like as blank as you can. Uh, but yeah, no, Hades is the best part of the season. I think like uh, the show's portrayal of the underworld. Like if you play Hades, the video game, you know how expansive that section of Greek mythology is. Like just that one tiny little bit of it is massive. And the show does spend a, a fair amount of time it, uh, expanding and making it feel like its own unique yeah. world that's unlike anything else. Uh, with like rules, creatures, locations, everything. It is very, very cool to see. Um, and like, yeah, story was they do some very, very bold things that I was very surprised by. I, and I just say, I hope they make many, many, many more seasons. I think that was my biggest thing is I, one of the things I love, um, which I guess we should probably say their names, Charlie and Vlas Palpanides, like they're, they're phenomenal showrunners on this, on this series. And I think what I loved about season one was that there was a reverence for Greek mythology, but a, they were unafraid to kind of take the reins of it while still honoring some of like the pieces that make so much sense. So one of the things that I found really interesting in season one was it leads with what all Greek myths lead with is Zeus can't keep it in his pants. And then it goes on to be like a really deep story of lineage and responsibility and marriage. And in season one for me, Hera is, I, she's the go. I, I love her. I, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense. Did she go sense. overboard? Yeah, but it makes sense. Like, you yeah. know, we take so much. Um, but Hera is, all of her ill deeds are done from love. And we see this culminate in season two when she mourns Zeus. She loved Zeus. He betrayed her consistently, but that did not mean that she stopped loving him. And I think what this season for season two really captures is that behind the Zeus can't keep it in his pants stuff, it is all going back to love. Every single character that is a driving force in the narrative this season is tied to loving others and being loved by others. And I think that that is something that makes it really beautiful and really intimate. While it is still really dark and really violent, it is also telling those deeper character relationship stories. And I think for me, like you said, it's why Hades takes the cake. There is nothing, like, I love nothing more than wife guy Hades. Like, that is, that is just <laughs> pinnacle Hades. He always will be. And I think what this season does is when they wrote Hera as the antagonist of season one, she was written from a place of empathy where you could understand why she was choosing to do everything that she was doing. And I think they did that again with Hades this season. Hades is the quote unquote villain of the season. He he's is an antagonist, the antagonist. More than a villain. Yes, he's an antagonist. That's why I said quote unquote villain. Like not like, yeah, he's an antagonist the same way Hera was. Um, but all of those pieces that go against our hero have a place where you understand. Like the dude just wants to be with his family. Like he just wants his family not to be separated. And I think that that is... I don't know. Like, I, I think grounding epic storytelling in kernels of intimacy is really where narratives shine. And I think that that's where the Greek myths shine as a whole. And that's what Blood of Zeus captures. Yeah, you, you mentioned like the, the, like the character interactions. And I think like, it, it, it will be easy to say like, oh, just because like they're, they're taking stuff from Greek mythology, like you already have great source of drama and just putting this family together and letting them do stuff because that, yeah. that just messed up. Uh, and we're Latinos, we know messed up family, but yes. this is like messed <laughs> up. But they still, like it's still a testament to the writing that they, they like it, it feels real. Even like they, yes. they're messed up superpower immortal immortal ish stuff feels real yeah and you understand their laws in a way that's both relatable but also like yeah 
it, it becomes their gods and not people. Yeah. And no. I think that, that, that balance is not easy to do. Yeah. Where you make them feel like actual people, but they're still like, they're gods. Well, and like, they've seen the children talk really well. Yeah. Well, and especially too, because like they, they visually are different. Like when you watch hair, when you watch Aries and hair and beef, like Aries is three yeah. times hair in size and it never feels like comedic. It always feels like actual weight to it. And I think like, you're absolutely right. Like they are these gods doing these angry god problems but like at the end of the day Ares is just mad that his dad cheated on his mom like that that's all like that is actually the core of Ares Ares the god of war his character he's a mama's boy <laughs> oh yeah and it makes and it I so love much that, more interesting I love that that wasn't that much of a part in season two in season one because yes. like, the focus was Heron coming into this but I love how much like Ares was mad as his siblings, like, like where he could like, oh yeah, that's the pastor group, and then exactly. he's still like, yeah, no, like there's us, and then there's you, and then there's Aaron, and I'm like, yeah, and, this and, is very cool. I mean, I think the funny thing is now I'm just like, god dang, Latino families and Greek, the Greek no, pantheon have so much in common because everybody has that one group of cousins that only comes to select family functions, yeah, and doesn't always get the invite. Yeah. Where's that meme? The the handshaking meme. Oh my god! Pantheon Latinos. Oh my Master god! Yes. It's like you said, but yeah, I, I I love all of that. Um, and as you say, like, it's still pretty violent, and the action is great as mm -hmm. usual. Like that again. Yeah, it's, that's amazing. expected. No, no surprise. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the character designs, what I really enjoyed, and I, I don't remember if they showed in the trailer, so I won't spoil it, but everything that they do visually with Seraphim's character, I think is is really well yeah. done because it really lets him oscillate but and explore the more human side to him. Like I was real I didn't think I have a problem with movies and TV now making villains all empathetic. But I don't have a problem with that here because it all just like works and it makes sense. And so I was worried um, when the season first started that we were going to get like the human side to Fer Seraphim and that that was going to take away the edge. But it doesn't like the writing for Seraphim. Like I think Hades is the best, but I think Seraphim is right behind him because oh, yeah. there's there's that scene in the first part of the, the first part of the season um, where Seraphim is asked, do you repent? And he's like, no. No, no, I don't repent, actually. Um, play it again. I'll I, I won't repent for a second time. Oh, yeah. And that that I think was the core to showing you why he got that way, but understanding that he wasn't changing. There wasn't a magic moment where he just stopped being who he was. And I think that that, that was key. That was key to making it really sell. Yeah, I think uh two two things with that. The number one, like yeah, I mean, I I think they hit the 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 key that made that that still makes Suko one of the best redemption stories in like fiction, mm -hmm. which is you don't just make people re. Uh, it, it's not just about making them sympathetic or like have a tragic backstory. Yeah, it's also the actions. Uh, because also like you you said like you were worried about like every villain is relatable now or like not relatable like sympathetic. And I think like with Seraphine is that we we got that tragic backstory the moment he was introduced, really. Yeah. Like even before he started doing like awful things, he, you knew that like, yeah, well, there's something messed up. And, like, I mean, he, he, getting he, he left in up. a forest is kind of, as a baby is yeah, kind of. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, his mom chose the other kid and left immediately. Well, yeah. that maybe not her entirely her choice, but still. Uh, so I think like from the beginning they they made it clear that these guys gonna be more than just the the villain of the season. Mm -hmm. um, but is the fact that he knows what he did. He doesn't he like he, he like yeah sure like I'll yeah. take the punishment like I don't care I don't care. Yeah. I, I, like there's nothing that's gonna change that. Yeah. And I'm not gonna change it. So why try? That was the thing that kind of hit me really, not hard, but like I think was really good storytelling because Seraphim's character 
at the beginning of the season, he has it with his sins. And then he has another option to where he can undo the past and kind of like make it to where he doesn't go down the road that he does for Seraphim. And his response is just like, I can't change the past. Like changing the past does nothing. You have to let it go at the end of the day. Um, And I think that like, I did not expect to have that level of like interrogation and nuance to like grief and love from Sarah. Oh, yeah. I didn't. Like I really, really didn't. Um, but you're absolutely right. Like we've kind of been set up for this since he and was. And that introduced. applies, I think that, that sentiment applies just to the show in general, in that and like most of the characters in that they don't erase things just for convenience or because they're like yeah. quote unquote the good guys or for any excuse like every everyone gets what's coming to the like they they read what they saw what they saw yes. like even Zeus because one, yes. one thing like I remember like the first season I was like whoa like he does some messed up things and like they call him out for it but he's still like yeah but still he's Zeus so like yeah go on go on king you do what you do uh we still need you to fight the, the giant so like it, it, everything's forgiven and this is like no no and everyone is like, well, you you don't just erase everything bad with one good action. And yeah. saying like same thing applies with Seraphim. And I think like that's very cool. And that opens up for really cool stories towards the second half of the season. Yeah. And I think that that's like when it comes to balance, I think that the there's a lot of setup that happens in the first part of the season, which at first I felt was a little slow. But then I was like, well, no, this makes sense. Like, people are coming back into this story after, like, years away. But once that gas pedal gets hit, like, once it, once it's off, it's off. Like, it, it picks up and it accelerates really quickly, but it never really loses itself. Um, is there anything that you think the show could have done better? Uh, speaking of that, I do think, like, as you just said, I do think that it's, Kind of soft, or this is me personally, but I think like we same with the first season, where like it's not that it slows down necessarily. It's it's just that the second half there's a good chunk where it's there's no like like middle section high in my opinion in terms mm. of like a fight or like a big thing. It's yeah. mostly like story reveals, but most most everything is saved up until like the final episode. Yeah. I mean, the, the previous season, not like the last three, just the last episode. Yeah. And I do think like it is is mostly a a feeling that you're watching. You're like, well, are they just gonna save stuff for the next season? Mm-hmm. And it ends up being like, it, I think it still resolves things in a good way. Like it doesn't rush things, but it just feels like we're running. Let me just stop really quickly. I yeah. guess. Um, it's not. Yeah. It's not a huge downside or anything but it's still like oh okay yeah i was I just feeling... waiting for the finale yeah well and and i that was like one of the things like i think the finale is really really good um i wish there was a solid penultimate episode that like lead yes. but leads into it for that pc i think that's i think that's the thing yeah yeah um but i think it's funny because like i feel weird saying that it's like a critique of the show i feel like more of it is a critique of how much I don't trust Netflix to give people more seasons and give people more roadway or like a uh, yeah like a, a a roadway to tell the story more and I think that that's what I'm scared with um I know that like with Castlevania the num the episode count increased each season and that was good um I still don't think eight episodes they took is away enough. an episode they did season I, one was nine yes I don't and think, I think that that's a epi- problem yes they needed I, that they needed, they needed a, the nine episode. episode and I think that that's what's frustrating is I don't think that I don't think animated series they they excel and they are good season one of Castlevania was only four episodes and it's phenomenal yeah but you have to do so much more and I think as as a critic who watches it from a storytelling perspective and as a lover of animation who watches it, I want them to have more time. I want a 13 episode order. I want them to have already said that we're going to get season three. Like there's so much that you can do 
with this story and they're showing you it and setting it up that it almost like I don't want to critique the show but I I don't know if Netflix is going to give them more and it really yeah, I think that's the problem on that because of the way yeah, season I think two ends <laughs> I think it's one of those where like and I mean even but, but but I think yeah I think that's a problem with like platform but also I mean at the end of the day still like it was their choice to yeah. tell it that, that way no, to that's end it that fair. way because I think like same it, it was the same thing with season one I was rewatching it before the second season I was like what I feel like I'm missing something before the final two episodes mm -hmm. and then you're like everything happens within the span of like 20 minutes and then it ends and you're like okay well you you clearly need more yeah but if you don't know you have more then it is not it's not the cliffhanger it's, I think it's I don't think the problem is a cliffhanger because you still resolve things yes. while leaving yes. things open. Every, yeah, everything season two was is a resolved. big cliffhanger, though. Yeah. But we do have season three coming, so like that's yeah. slightly better. But I think the problem is that as you are watching it, you the, the, the way it's structured forces you to think of, okay, I need to know whether they're making more because otherwise I'm going to be worried about where they go. Yeah. And I, I don't want to be thinking about like the behind the scenes politics or whether or not they're renewed while I'm watching the show. Let me yes. find that out later. Yes. And Let that, that, that's, that yeah, because I didn't look up any, I was going to look it up before I wrote my review, but like, I didn't look up anything. I tried to go in as blind as possible because I just wanted to like take it in because that's how I took in season one. I didn't expect it. It came out of nowhere. There were hot gods and I was like, Ooh, Brown Apollo, let's go. And then yeah. I watched it and it was one of the best things I saw that year. And this is still one of the best things that has come out this year. Like by far, again, powerhouse doing all the work to carry adult animation on its back right now uh, for, for the U S um, but it, it like, I, I had that in the back of my head cause I didn't look it up. I was just like, is this all I'm going to get? Is this how we're ending it? Cause it is a ballsy ending that I will say I do. Oh, yeah. I oh, think yeah. that season two, for me, I think the the pacing issues become even smaller because of how ambitious that final episode is. Like that's a big swing. It I, it paid off in the episode, but I need season three to no, make I get it. Pays I think off. I think, but yeah, I think season two. The the thing like for good and bad is that it both. Again, introduces the underworld, which is huge. They do a lot with it. So that means, like, at least in the beginning, it's slightly, it's not slow, but it's still like it does, it, it packs more. Yes. So it feels more dense. And 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 the story gets takes a little bit to get going while you do all this stuff, which is very interesting because that's when you get the heavy stuff, yes. which I do think is the best part of the season. But again, that just means like you are packing a lot for the future. Yeah. Again, works, but that just means that. There's a lot of stuff here that, that that knowing that season three is coming makes me just more excited about season three. Yes, yes. Because again, the, the way it ends, oh my god! That's one but of the best finales. Like, no, but like, it, it, the, yes, that, that's one of the I best like, season finales. There's still like some issues that they they could have like structured it better. I think that mm. structure wise, it could have been slightly better. But I think that uh, yeah, like the end is. I don't care because the ending was cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, and he can't say anything because I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Uh, so, <sighs> Rafael, do you want people to watch this? Should people tune yes. in and watch this today? Yeah. Watch it 15 times on Netflix, like order season four right away. Yes. More seasons. More seasons. Also, they said that season three, they told me when I interviewed, like, season three should be like, much shorter way than season two of course like everyone was okay. saying that but they say like with like less than two years like a year year and a half or something like that just a year you know what though i was forged in the weights after castlevania seasons so this is fine because yeah. <laughs> castlevania yeah. seasons were really long um yeah. maybe one day i'll get sesmano season two <laughs> we can only dream I know. Uh but yes, uh what what would you rate this out of 10? I mean, I think like an eight, eight, can, can I do the same eight, can I say 8.5? I'll say 8.5. You can say 0.5s, yeah. It doesn't matter if you tell me no, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> 8.5. I'm going to go higher and I'm going to say a 9.5 and the only reason I'm taking Ooh, off okay. 
my half point is really just because of the pacing. And it sucks because yeah. I keep bouncing back and forth in my brain is like, if that... Yeah, I would, if, if I couldn't do decimal, I will give it a nine. But yeah. If I can't get it, I'm going to be yeah. safe. <laughs> it's slightly, slightly, slightly below in an A+. Yeah. It's real good. It's real good though. Like uh, like Raphael said, like you need to watch this 15 times within the first 28 days. So Netflix oh, give yeah. us season four, please. Yeah. Um, no, no. G- genuinely, I think that this is another testament to the artistry and talent of what's coming out of Powerhouse Animation right now. Um, and the the writing creatives that they have that they're working with to create these shows and and bring them to the forefront. And I think it's there's really there's nobody that's doing that like the honestly no. not at the adult level and i yeah it makes me even more excited for my girl lara croft to come into animation next because oh, yeah, that's, that's their true. next series i am that's true yeah um very very excited. oh i i will tell you later but i'm very excited for that <laughs> i, I talked to the the, the, the showrunner it, 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 it made me excited for it Okay, well, we're going to cut this podcast and we're going to say, go watch Blood of Zeus season two. Do it. <laughs>